Hey guys, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made this ruched pleated fondant cake. But before we get to that, I wanted to tell you all about a brand that I have been collaborating with. I think a lot of you will be really interested in this. So let's see that and then we will get right to the tutorial. So in my journey of making tutorials, I have found a few things that have been hard to tackle. And now I have a solution for one of those. One of the biggest problems I've had is my setup for my camera. And what I have found is a lot of these are really hard to set up. They take up counter space. And the biggest thing is that they fall over, especially when I'm trying to do overhead shots. So I finally found a solution, guys. And I'm telling you, this thing is fantastic. What I found that has made my life so much easier is this Revo Rover. This thing is great because it has a weighted base, which makes it so it does not topple over. It has built-in lighting. All those different angles are great because of overhead, face on, at an angle, and it's all built into this one machine. And in fact, I'm using it right now. And I have no extra lighting. The only lighting I'm using is the natural lighting in the room and the lighting that's built into this machine. It's compact, it's lightweight, it's portable, it's heavy duty and I can pack this up, shove it in my purse and take it on location with me when I'm doing a wedding setup. And I can just take this, put it in my bag, set it on a table that's next to the table where the cake is going. And it's great. That's all I need to do. Put your money in one thing that you can use for everything. Trust me on this. It's been a few years now and this is the best setup I have found. So if you would like to get started on your recording journey and don't want to spend thousands of dollars on your setup, there is a 15% discount in my description below with my affiliate link to celebrate 5,000 satisfied customers. I highly recommend it. Happy recording. <laughs> so I am going to start with some pre-filled and crumb coated cakes that I had just wrapped in saran wrap until I was ready to use them. I don't always do that, but since it was going to take me a little bit to get to these cakes, I went ahead and wrapped them and placed them in the fridge overnight. You can do that. It's just fine. As long as it's wrapped, they're not going to, they're not going to dry out. And I am using some dark chocolate ganache to cover this cake I used for this technique. I wanted to show you how it works on both fondant, I'm sorry, both buttercream and ganache. I find that I do prefer the ganache, but it will work on buttercream. So I'm just doing a good coating of my dark chocolate ganache on this, and that is three parts dark chocolate to one part heavy cream. Heat it up together and mix together till it's smooth and let it cool a little bit before you use it on the cake. Otherwise, it's gonna be too runny. But what you saw me do there is I decided when I was almost done coating this cake that it was gonna be a little too tall. So I just went ahead and used my serrated knife and I just kinda lopped off the very top of it. Um, I just start cutting and then hold your hand, actually tuck your elbow into your side and turn the turntable and let that do the cutting for you. That way you know that you have a better chance of your cake being level on top. Now I did do a second coat on both of these cakes, but I believe I only showed you the first coat. You get the idea, and after you do your first coat, you put them in the freezer for 20 minutes or the refrigerator. I'm sorry, backwards. Refrigerator for tw 20 minutes or your freezer for 10 minutes before you do your second coat. Just make sure that when you touch the surface that none of the buttercream or the ganache is on your finger and then you can do another coat now this bottom tier was a taller tier and i wanted to show you two different ways of doing some um, pleating and with this bottom tier 
I wanted it to be a little taller and I'm showing, gonna show you how to handle that. This is my little cheater for adding pleating to a cake when you're a little nervous to actually just use the fondant. This gives your fondant somewhere to rest. It's kind of like a built-in pleating. I just rolled up the fondant and I am just, I attached it to the ganache and I do the same with the buttercream. I just let the condensation that forms after you bring it out of either the refrigerator or the freezer, I let the condensation attach it to the cake for me. You don't need to add any extra water if, or any piping gel or anything. The condensation itself is enough. Now I'm just using my uh, blending tool here. It's a Dresden tool and a blending tool to kind of soften that edge of where the fondant meets, meets the ganache. Instead of, because I didn't want it to look like just a log of fondant underneath the um, final coating of fondant. I just want that to kind of aid you in creating the look. So I'm kind of tapering it off towards the ends and softening the top edge of it so that it's not so obvious that's what's below there. And then we're gonna continue this on to the other side. Do exactly the same thing. They don't have to mirror each other because actual pleating is not gonna be typically exactly the same on both sides. So don't worry too much about it being all matchy-matchy. I fight that, I'm a matchy-matchy person. Um, just try not to worry about it too much. And then set it back in your refrigerator to set up while you're working on the next tier because you want that fondant to be adhered to your um, either your ganache or your buttercream. Otherwise, they're gonna slide around and that won't help you. And on this butter bottom tier, I use the buttercream and you can see that I am Actually, the finish of the buttercream is getting dented and messed up a little bit, but that's okay. And this is why I prefer the ganache. But it is okay because you're going to smooth that fondant over it. It's um, And it, since it ruching and pleating is not perfect, you're not going to see that. But it does kind of scoot around on the buttercream a little bit more than the fondant. Or I'm sorry, than the ganache. And again, just place it in the refrigerator until that fondant no longer moves on the surface of the buttercream. Now with this fondant, I added a lot of shortening to it because I want it to be pliable because you're going to need some working time and you don't want it to elephant skin. I would suggest using a marshmallow fondant, a homemade the um, LMF fondant that um, I have a recipe for and a tutorial on because it just allows you some more working time. I've done this quite a few times. I'm really used to working with fondant. So I b used the pre-made kind on this, but I would suggest using the marshmallow fondant. And I don't show you the top tier. My phone decided it wanted to um, cut out on me. I don't know why. I don't know if my SD card was full, if I needed to um, delete some footage or move some footage around, but it was deleting some footage. So I did film it, but it, I don't know where it's at, but it's basically the same technique on the top and the bottom. The only difference is on the bottom, you're pulling the fondant, you're wrapping it around the back on both of them and um, holding it taut against the back, moving the extra, I'm gonna call it fabric, but it's fondant, towards the front. Now go ahead and smooth it along the ridges of those pieces of fondant that you already placed on. Now you're gonna wanna roll out a piece that's much larger than the cake because for pleating, you have to have something to work with. So I don't know if you can tell better than, or see better than I can tell it. You kind of pull it around the back, pull it up to that top point and merge them together. Now um, we're gonna have some pleating swags down the middle of this. So I'm not so worried about there being a crease in the middle, um, cause that's gonna be hidden and just cut off your excess pieces as you go. Have patience with this. You gotta have to move a little faster, but be patient with it. At the same time, go in with confidence, be a little cocky. <laughs> See, I got this, I know what I'm doing. And just go for it. The top is easier to work with because you're pulling that fondant down from the top to the bottom, which is easier to work with. Let gravity be on your side with that top tier. It's probably better that I'm showing you this one than the top one because if you can do this bottom one, you can do the top one. Now just remove all your excess and just kind of smooth it down where you can. 
Don't worry about it being perfect because like I said, this is mimicking fabric, so it's not gonna be perfect. So here's the top two. You can see that I just kind of draped it around the top, pulled it from the back towards the front, gathered it at the bottom, kind of twisted it a little bit, and then cut off, I'm gonna be cutting off the excess. I already cut around the sides, around the bottom, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my straight edge here and just lob off that excess because you're gonna have decorations right there. You're not gonna see that. What you're gonna see is the pleating. So that's what really matters the most. Just remove that excess and just get rid of that bulk. Now I do have some straws as a support already inside that bottom tier I used four straws cut them to the height added a little buttercream on top of that cake and then place the top on and I had chilled that for a good 20 minutes so I could lift it up and place it on the top eat more easily now we're making our pleats I'm just cutting it into I don't know what shape you would call that it's an elongated oval with a straight top I don't know just look at it whatever shape this is that's the shape you want and I'm using these skewers to help me create those pleats. You just kind of use your fingers to guide the fondant in between them. Cut off your excess, and then you gather them at the top, pull those out, and there you have your pleats. I just kind of scrunch them up together a little bit more, cut off more of that excess, and kind of soften that edge a little bit with your fingers and the sides of your hands. And I just attached it with water. A lot of pe people will tell you use piping gel, but piping gel never really fully dries. So with the weight of the fondant, you're gonna wanna use just buttercream, maybe a little bit of buttercream, but I find that water works the best. Water attaches fondant to fondant, the best I find. And just kind of play around with those pleats where you want them. And I did three of them and I did them all exactly the same way, just three different sizes of fondant. You could do one, you could do two, whatever you want. And then I'm just using these artificial dried, what are we gonna call these, twigs? Leaves? I'm not sure what they're called. If you know what this is called, you let me know, please, in the comments, that would be great. Um, now, if this were for an order, I would put a straw inside of the cake and then place your um, dried floral into the straw to make it food safe, but this is not for an order, so just keep that in mind that for an order, put a straw in there before you place your, your artificial or real dried floral. So there you go, guys, I hope you liked it. And again, check out my affiliate link, order yourself one of those Revo Rovers, I love it. Catch you next time. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video, and if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.